Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's try to find the action or calculate the action of an object dropping from a height of 4.9 meters with no initial velocity. We simply drop the object from a height of 4.9 meters. Of course, that's strategically chosen because you know it will take exactly one second for it to hit the, gr hit the ground, so it makes the numbers a little bit easier to deal with. Just to kind of give us a, an orientation here, we know that we start with a maximum potential energy, and the potential energy will decrease to zero as it hits the ground, and the kinetic energy will increase, and you can see the, the uh, not exponential, but quadratic curve for the increase in the kinetic energy and the quadratic curve for the decrease in the potential energy. Notice that the action is going to be the average, time average kinetic energy minus the time average potential energy and you can see that the potential energy will be greater on average than the kinetic energy and so therefore the difference between those two should still be a negative number. Now to calculate or to find the content inside the integrals we need to find the kinetic energy and the potential energy as a function of time. Typically those are as a function of velocity and as a function of height. So we need to find velocity as a function of time and height as a function of time for the, for the particular situation where we drop a ball from a given height. So starting with the velocity, we could say velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. Now in this case, our initial velocity will be zero and the acceleration will be the acceleration due to gravity. We'll let g be a positive 9.8 meters per second squared because that will make the calculations a little bit easier. So this goes to zero, so velocity as a function of time is going to be equal to g times t, and therefore when we square the velocity, we get g squared t squared, which is what we're going to need for the kinetic energy, because this is equal to one-half mv squared, and then replacing that by this, this will be equal to one-half mg squared t squared, whoop, that should be a square, go and so that will be what we need inside the integra integration to find the average kinetic energy for the potential energy we can say that the um, height h is equal to some initial height minus well in this case we're going to fall because of the acceleration to gravity will be one half g t squared we don't have the middle term we don't have a velocity term because we have an initial zero velocity so we can then take this and replace it in the mgh equation for potential energy. So mgh now becomes mg times the quantity, some initial height, minus one half g t squared. And that will go into the integral for the average potential energy. So now we're ready to calculate the action. So in this case, the action will be equal to the integral from zero to one, because we know that it's going to take exactly one second for the object to hit the ground, times the kinetic energy, and that will be right there, one half mg squared t squared dt minus the integral from zero to one for the average potential energy, which will be right here, mg times uh, the quantity h sub naught minus one half gt squared times dt. Making things just a little bit easier, we can pull some of the things out of the integral sign. So we have s is equal to one half mg times the integral from zero to one of t squared dt minus pulling out the mg times the integral from zero to one of h sub naught minus one half gt squared dt. And now we're ready to find what that is equal to. That's what we're looking for, the action for this particular event. And of course, the only force that acts on the object would be the force of gravity. So S equals, let's see here, we need a couple more things. Let's say that the mass is equal to one kilogram. That makes things a little bit easier. We have G, we have H. Okay, everything else we have, so that gives us one half times one times 9.8 times, that will be T cubed over three evaluated from zero to one minus one times 9.8 times, that would be h sub naught, which is 4.9 times t, minus 1 half, g is 9.8, and that would be t cubed over three, the whole thing evaluated 
from 0 to 1. You can see that when you plug in the lower limit, you get nothing. Plug in the upper limit, you just replace every t with a 1. S equals, that would be 1 half times 9.8 squared. And this would be when evaluated, we get 1 third minus, here we get uh, 9.8 times the height, which is 4.9 times the time, which is 1. And minus times minus becomes plus. We get 9.8 times 1 half times 9.8 and times one-third. And notice that this term looks exactly like this term, so we can combine those two. So we get S is equal to, we have two of those, so that would be uh, one-third, 9.8 squared, minus 9.8 times 4.9, because this would be one-sixth, 9.8 squared, one-sixth, 9.8 squared, two of them gives us one-third, 9.8 squared. And then with a calculator, we get uh, 9.8 squared divided by 3 equals, that would be 32 minus 9.8 9 times 4.9, which is 48. And so the difference would be a minus 16, that would be joules times seconds. Remember, that is an integral of the average kinetic energy over time. So when we integrate, we get kinetic energy times time. <clears throat> no mistakes? Hmm? No, 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 no mistakes, no. All right, let me, let me finish it up like this. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ah. There we go, all right, good, okay. All right, and the difference would be a minus 16. Now, units-wise, again, we're integrating the kinetic energy over time, so that would be joules, times seconds. If you want the average kinetic energy, we'd have to divide the whole, whole thing by the time interval to get the average kinetic energy. So you can see that the action is indeed units of joules times seconds. And so that would be the answer for this particular case for an object dropping from a height of 4.9 meters. And that is how it's done.